right, gang, Jeremy Hazel here from Seven Season Studios. This week's project comes to us from an actual student who asked how to do a double exposure in Affinity Designer. So in your resource file, you'll find a file of a bear and a file of some wooded area that I both got from pexels.com. Awesome site for free photos. So let's go ahead and open a file. We're gonna bring up a new file. I'm gonna be working in the web persona. I'm gonna go 1080p, so we're gonna do this thing up large. And I'm gonna hit OK. Now let's go to File, Place, and let's open up this brown bear from pexels.com. And let's click and hold so that we drag it out. Now let's crop it down. Come over to your vector crop tool. Grab the sides of this thing. Get some of that pesky background out of there so we can blow this bear up. Now, grab your move tool. Right click in your layers panel. You see that this has a crop filter on it. Right click on the layer. Make sure the blue is there. And rasterize. That sets the crop on the bear. Cool. So now let's go ahead and bring this bear full size. Now we have to select the bear. So let's go to the pixel persona. Let's grab our selection brush tool right here on the left hand side. Now with the brush tool selected, make sure you're in the add mode and then trace along the perimeter of the bear. Now stay close to the perimeter, but don't get crazy about it. You're going to refine these edges, but realize we're making a silhouette really is what we're doing. So around the snout, I wanted to remain pretty true. But around these legs, you see I'm making more straight lines and across the belly than I am in other areas. And then come up along the side of the bear. And again, folks, it doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't an all-day selection, right? Come over here, join it. Now we're going to ramp up the size of the brush. And with the addition mode still selected, I'm going to get all the marching ants from the middle of my bear. All right, so the goal is to clear out the bear. All right, once the bear is cleared out, that one pesky one out there, now what we're going to do is we have to refine this. So we come up to the refine button and we click go. It'll turn red. And now you see we're going to go along the outer perimeter of the bear. And we're going to ask affinity do do a better job now you see it's got some of the bear here I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the ramp a little bit it's gonna refine it even further and now I'm gonna come around the ear okay come around the leg and anywhere there's red there we'll make sure that we're getting as close as we can now it's not gonna be perfect right I'm not asking for perfection all right, once we're pretty close, you see I've got some red bleed over here. We're going to fix that. Go ahead and hit apply. And now what's going to happen here? You see how it kind of ate in there? We're going to go ahead. We're going to add to the selection. I'm going to make sure my brush is ratcheted down. And then we're just going to clean this bad boy up. One more. And I'm coming across the back of that bear. You see on the back hindquarters here got a little bit greedy when it cut in. I want to make sure that we've got a good cut on each leg. Okay. And I'm really interested in the face here because part of the face is what's going to show through in the double. So, okay. Now, once you've got the bear the way you want the bear, the very next thing you're going to do, you're going to go up to select invert the pixel selection now when you do this right now the bear is selected and everything inside when you invert it it will be everything outside now to illustrate this look at the marching ants down along the bottom of the screen grab your move tool and now you see the marching ants are all over the outside just tap the delete key leaving only the bear all right we're in good shape now let's go to file, open, and let's bring in our nature forest picture and bring that up. Now this is going to open up as a separate tab up here and it's a single layer. We're going to edit, cut, 
Come back to our bear. Edit. Paste. Now you got the background and the bear. Now the trick is to pull the background into the bear. Now it's a nested layer. So now we have to deselect the bear. So let's go to select and let's deselect. All right. Now I intentionally did this with this vague sort of non solid outline. I really like the effect on this. You can work on refining it if it's crystal clear if you want to. All right, so now let's go ahead and grab our move tool. Make sure the background layer is selected. And now let's go ahead and move the picture where we want it. I want a little bit more contrast on this area of the face. So I'm going to move the background image around until it's right about there. You want to move the background image before you take the next step. All right, the next step. With the background image selected, this is crucial, create a mask layer. Now, you'll see that a mask layer is created on the background layer, and it's black. Okay, so what we're going to do here now, we're going to grab a brush. I'm going to go to my spray paints. We're going to grab a spray paint brush. And I'm going to grab the eraser tool. Okay. Now, let's see what I'm going to do here. I'm going to begin erasing away part of that layer. This is where the magic happens. Now, you want to keep the most identifiable parts of the bear. Okay, now let's take a look. If you want to do a little bit more, you can reduce the opacity of the eraser down. You can increase the size. So let's go ahead and ramp that up a little bit. And I can move a little bit of that bear forward. You see what I'm doing with this? All right, now we've got the bear kind of shining through some of the trees. I'm very, very happy with that. Bring that down just a little bit. I want to make that tree just a little less noticeable. I still want it there. And let's go ahead and remove some of those trees right there. And then let's bring some of the bear over here. I think that's probably good. We brought enough of the bear in that I think we've got a very nice mix to it. All right. So that's how you do that. Good deal. All right. Now, the very next step, we need a background. Let's go over to the draw persona. Let's grab a layer and let's put a layer on this bad boy. Now, the rectangle drew inside of the bear. We don't want that. We want it above it. And now, you know what? Let's bring the rectangle down below the layer. Okay, and let's go ahead and fill it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill it kind of with an orangish, maybe something around in here. I want it to really complement the bear. I don't want it to so much stand out. I think we're in pretty good shape with something right about here I'm happy with. Mm, a little bit too saturated. All right, I'm going to go right here. That looks good to me. All right, perfect. So we got the background rectangle. We've got the image with the mask included. And we've got the bear. So the very next step, what we're going to do, select the brown bear layer, add one more mask layer. OK, because we have this hard edge right here on the outer. I don't really care for that. I want to remove it. Make sure the mask is selected. You see the white layer on the outside? So don't click this. Click this. Come over to your gradient tool. Grab a gradient and pull a gradient from the top to the bottom. Now remember with masks, white reveals, black conceals. So we want to make this part up here a little more transparent. So we come to there. We grab the black. 
go ahead now and let's adjust this midpoint up quite a bit. Okay, let's go ahead and move this point up quite a ways as well here. All right, we're going to bring that front and center. All right, now let's go ahead. I think that is pretty good. All right, so happy with that. All right, folks, so that's a little bit on how to do a double exposure using Affinity Designer to get a bear with some woods into your picture. All right, folks, hope you learned a little something. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. And if there's something in particular with Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo you want to see done, go ahead and hit me up. I want to make content that teaches you something and is actually something you want to watch. All right, folks, we'll see you in next week's video. Have a good weekend.